Hi guys and welcome to Better Data Science. Today I want to discuss one important topic for data scientists and Python users in general and that's how to read and write CSV datasets faster. You're likely accustomed to these things with pandas but pandas is terribly slow when working with CSV files. There's a better and faster option out there which you can use only to handle reading and writing CSV files and you can do the rest of the data analysis as you would usually with pandas. That option is an open source Python package called PyArrow. It's an amazing binding for Apache Arrow project. By using PyArrow instead of pandas you will achieve multiple time faster reads and writes. To be more precise, the examples you'll see today will show you that PyArrow is 7 times faster in these tasks. So if you're working with gigabytes of data daily, changing how you read data and write data could have huge impact on your workflow. You can install PyArrow either with pip or anaconda. You can see both commands on the screen now, so choose the one that matches your Python environment. I already have it installed, so I can open up JupyterLab and start coding. Ok, I'm in the notebook now, so let's start with the imports. You'll need quite a few of those today, because we're making our own dataset. And we'll import PyArrow by itself. And we'll import the CSV module from PyArrow. And that's it. We'll create somewhat of a large dataset. It will contain around 11 million rows and have date, float and string columns. All of the values are completely made up. First let's declare a function that will generate a random string of uppercase letters and numbers. There we have it, so let's test it a couple of times. These are completely made up, but that's ok for our example. Next, let's declare a date range so we can assign it as a column later. It will have data from the year 2000 to 2001 on a minute interval. Here's a couple of those. And finally I'll set a random seed to numpy so you can get the same arrays and I'll declare a variable to hold the number of rows over for the dataset. And with that out of the way let's make a dataset. It will contain our date column, 5 columns for random floating point numbers and 2 columns of random strings. I'll just copy paste this one a couple of times. And now the string columns. And I'll just copy it one more time. And that's it. Let's also time this column so we can know how much time it took to create the dataset. Yeah, just over one minute on my machine. So next let's see how the dataset looks like. 
oh I forgot to rename the column so it didn't get created let me just fix that real quick and I'll execute this cell once again and now everything looks good let's also check the shape so it's quite a big one over 11 million rows so the resulting csv file will be quite big let's see the performance with pandas next we'll use pandas as a baseline solution it's what you would use if libraries like pyr didn't exist we'll time the execution of every cell so it's easier to compare the two later Let's save the dataset to a CSV file first and see how long it takes. It took almost a minute on my machine to save 11 million rows to a CSV file. You can save yourself some disk space if you don't care for write speed. Pandas can compress the CSV file and save it as csv.gz. And this time it took over 3 minutes, but that's the price you'll have to pay if you want to save some disk space. You can read both versions with the read CSV function. Let's see how long these take. So not too bad for the uncompressed version, but let's see what happens if you try to read the csv.gz file. Yeah, compressing csv file in this way isn't a way to go since it takes more time to write and more time to read the dataset. This may not seem as a very long time to either save or read a csv file since it's around 2 gigabytes in size but you can speed it up significantly by using PyArrow instead. Let's see how to do so. So things are a bit different with PyArrow, but you'll get the hang of it in no time. One thing you should know from the start is that PyArrow doesn't support date time values. We'll have to convert our date attribute to a time step. We'll also copy the original dataset so we don't mess anything up. Here's how to do that. And let's see how it looks like after the change. It's still the same information, just presented differently. You can now convert the data frame to a PyR table. It's a necessary step before you can dump the dataset to disk. And now we're ready to roll. PyArrow CSV module has a write CSV function you can use to write arrow tables to a CSV file. PyArrow did the exact same thing as Pandas in a fraction of the time. Let's also see how you can save compressed CSV files to disk. It will require a bit more code, but nothing you can't manage.
So saving compressed file is a bit slower, but nothing compared to doing the same in pandas. And finally, let's see how you can read CSV files with PyArrow. The syntax is identical for compressed and non-compressed files. Both are now stored as pyro tables, as you can see from the following. Here's how you can convert them to a pandas data frame. And let's just verify everything looks as it should. Yeah, everything looks good to me. I also want to show you the folder to which CSV files were saved, so you can check the file size to yourself. So the PyArrow version is a bit smaller, but that's because we're not storing the datetime column and instead we're storing the integer basically. And that's all you should know for today. Let's now look at the comparison charts before wrapping up this video. Let's take a look at the save times first. For uncompressed data, pandas took around 8 times longer to save the identical dataset. If you take into account the conversion to data table, then PyArrow was only 7 times faster. And for compressed data, PyArrow was about 2 times faster. Let's take a look at the read times next. PyArrow was 7 times faster if you don't take into account the conversion from PyArrow table to a pandas data frame. If you do take that into account, then PyArrow was only 2 times faster. PyArrow was 3 times faster for compressed files, or 1.9 times faster if you take into account the conversion. Overall, PyArrow is a clear winner, so keep that in mind next time you're working with large CSV files. To summarize, if your apps save and load data from disk frequently, then it's a wise decision to leave these operations to PyArrow. On average, it's around 7 times faster than Pandas, and that's based only on CSV data type. If you replace CSV for, let's say, Parquet, then it's a whole different story. I plan to cover PyArrow and Parquet in the following videos, as I go to combination for fastest data loading and writing, so stay tuned to the channel if you want to learn more. In the meantime, please consider giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to Better Data Science. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.